welcome to episode two of Shortcut Piano. So last time we learned how to play chords C and G and we learned about what a lead sheet is and how to read chord symbols and how we're going to use that to play piano. Now today we're going to learn some melody and learning melody will make you able to play the melody in your right hand instead of singing, which is great because some of us are not that comfortable singing. So we're going to learn first how to play our chords in our left hand so that we can play the melody in the right hand. Sometimes you'll need to play the chords in the right hand and sometimes you'll need to play them in your left hand. Right now we're gonna focus on playing them in your left hand. So if you will first review with me the chords that you learned last week, this is the C chord. You put your thumb right to the left of the two black keys. And then the next finger goes up a skip. The next finger goes up a skip. And that's a C chord. Now, if you take the bottom two notes and move them down in the following way by your thumb going to the left and putting down your pointer finger and picking up your middle finger, you should have this chord, this G chord, which has one empty key in between these two notes and two empty keys in between these two notes. And that would be C chord, G chord, back to C chord you practice that and you're ready to try it in your left hand. This may be more difficult for you if you're right-handed and may be easier for you if you're left-handed. So you're going to take your pinky and you're going to put it by the two black keys that are lower down from where you were. And you're going to put the pinky to the left of those two black keys. Then you're going to skip to the next key and skip to the next key so that you've skipped two keys again, just like you did the chord in this hand. Now you're going to take bottom two notes and move them each to the left and that is your G chord. Now in a way it's easier to do them in the left hand because you're just picking up these two fingers and moving them back and forth. There is no exchange of fingers like there is in the right hand. So that's a C chord, a G chord, and a C chord. So once you're really good at the C chord and the G chord, then we can start putting the melody with it and learning how to read the melody. There are a couple of different ways to read melodies. One of the ways to read notes on the staff is a very old fashioned way where you're taught letters and you may have heard this before, every good boy deserves fudge, E-G-B-D-F, or face, F-A-C-E for the spaces. This is a very old fashioned way of being taught and it will work for you, but it's very slow. I'm gonna teach you a shortcut, faster method to reading melody. I've used this with so many students from very little kids to adults, and it works every time. It can make you read notes and be able to figure out notes so quickly. So let's go to that. Here is the music for dreidel, and I'm gonna show you how the staff works. There are five lines on the staff, and there are four spaces in between. If we have a note represented by a little dot on various lines and spaces, we will have nine different notes. Four of them will be on the spaces and five of them will be on the lines. If we can learn where the lines and spaces are on the piano, in this clef, which is where we were putting our right hand, then we will be able to read all these notes and it's much easier than you think it's going to be. We're going to start now by learning where the lines and spaces are on the keys. So if you look to the right of the two black keys right here, that is your first line note. And what I'm gonna do is put a sticker on it. You can just use masking tape or whatever you want. Now, if we go to that key, obviously that key would be a space note. So I'm gonna skip that and put the pink stickers on the keys that would be line notes. And they skip just like this. So this is the first line of the staff, the bottom line, the next line, the next line, the next line, and the next line. And the ones in between are the spaces. This would be the bottom space of the staff, the next space of the staff, the next space, and the next space. I'm recommending that for now, you put these stickers on the keys while you get used to the concept and then you gradually start to remove them, maybe only leaving the bottom one or the top one or bottom, middle, and top or something like that. Uh, but let's start with all the stickers. It makes it much easier. So now we have a couple of notes 
that aren't on the lines or spaces. So you'll see that this note here is right under the first line. So that's going to be the key just below or to the left of the first line note. Now, if we go to this one, this one has an extra little line put in, sort of a temporary line marking where it would be. So that would be one line below the first line. That's the only exception really to these nine notes on the staff that we'll see right now. So if you're going to start playing this, you first need to learn how to find a note on the keys. So let's practice that. Let's take this note here. Is it on a line or a space? Well, it's on a line, see? It's on the second line. So let's look at the keys. This is the first line, that's the second line. So that's where the note would be. So that's one way that we can know where the notes are by what lines and spaces they're on. But there's a whole other thing that is quite helpful and that is called skips and steps. So let's say that we have this note right here. We know that's the second line and there's the second line note again. And now it's going right down to the space next to it. That's just down a step or to the next key on the piano. If we go from here to that note, we can also see that's down a step. A lot of music moves stepwise, which makes it very easy to read. So if you started here, you would be playing this note, the same note, then you would be going down, down, down. That would be the same, same, same. Now we're going up. It's the same. We're going up. But now here we're going from a space to a space. We're skipping that line. So we would go down, but we would have to skip a key down. Now I'll show you this on the piano. So if we played this note and we're doing the same line note, and then we go down a step, that would be that. Down another step would be that. Down another step would be that. So it's a simple concept. You just have to remember that down is to the left and up is to the right. As long as you remember that, you'll be fine. So if we were to play the melody of dreidel, looking at the sheet of music, we would start with this note, that's the one below, the line below the lines. Then we would go up, same, up, down a skip, up a skip, up another skip, same, down, down, down. So this will result at a normal speed in... If we put the chord symbols that are at the top of the music with it, we would have this. Now let's look at jingle bells. So for jingle bells, we start on the first line and we repeat that note. Then we repeat it again, then we repeat it again, and now we're going to go up a skip to the next line. Now look at that, we're going to go two lines away, so we're going to skip a key and skip another key, all the way to there, up a step and up a step. So this is... Now, the thing to note is that I'm not using the overall location of lines and spaces as much as I'm using skips and steps, which is the quickest way to read. So basically you want to use what line or space that you're looking for to find your location on the piano. And then from there, you want to read up and down by skip and step, which is really the way that people read piano quickly, even very advanced people read music this way rather than playing the piano like a typewriter as if each note has a particular place on the piano. It's piano is read much more in motion. So one thing you might ask is why do some of these notes have stems? Some of them have no stems. Some of them are filled in. 
If you've ever taken any music classes, even in elementary school, you might remember that these notes are held for a longer amount of time if they're empty on the inside. This note, which is called a whole note, is held for a really long time because it has no stem. We're not going to get into the specifics of counting and rhythm. That's for another lesson. But because you know the rhythm of Jingle Bells, you'll know how to play it. You know that it goes... know what it sounds like so you'll be able to play it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. These are the assignments that I'm going to give you for this week. So the first thing you want to do is practice the chords in your right hand. Then you're going to practice them in your left hand. Then you're going to put those stickers on the line notes and space notes on your keyboard or piano. And you're going to practice reading and hunting for some of the notes on the page. I'm going to show you a nice long snapshot of the page at the end of this video so you can screenshot it and use that to practice with, maybe print it out. And once you are pretty good at the melody in the right hand, you can try to put the chords together with the melody. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. This week you're going to be very busy practicing, keeping up with this assignment but you'll be able to do it pretty much by the end of the week. You should be able to play dreidel and jingle bells, if not slowly with some hesitation. Thanks for watching. And here is the final shot of the page that we worked on today that you can screenshot.